Good morning, beloved. Peace be with you. Today we're back on the 22nd Sunday Ordinary Time, back in the Gospel of Mark. We took a little break. We were in John chapter 6 for a while, going through the Bread of Life discourse. And now we're back to Mark, so we have a little kind of transition. But instead of actually preaching the Gospel like normal, I'm going to preach from the first reading, from Deuteronomy. And kind of break open this. This is in Deuteronomy chapter 4, so at the very beginning of the book. Got to switch it up every once in a while, you know? Keep you on your toes. Today the, so Deuteronomy is great. We've just recently gone through part of it in the first, in the, the first readings at Daily Mass. Um, this is Moses' last kind of exhortation and speech to the Israelites as they're on the cusp of entering the Promised Land. So they've been wandering for 40 years. This new generation has, well, grew up wandering in the desert, and they're adults now. They've grown up, and they're on the, right on the edge of the promised land, about to go in. And so Moses gives them this last really long sermon and homily, really, this last speech. So if you thought mine are long, go read the book of Deuteronomy. Let's see how long that takes you to finish. He does three things in this book that he's reminding the people of. The first, at the beginning, you notice he'll, he is reminding them of all the things in the past, where they came from, who they are, all that God has done for them to bring them to where they are today. And then he begins to remind them where they are today, on, this, on, the, on the cusp, or be, on the, the edge of entering the promised land, how important this moment is in their life, how this is the beginning of one of the fulfillments of God's promises that he made to their forefather Abraham. And then he begins to warn them about, about the future, and what they will encounter when they enter the promised land, how they'll be surrounded by and encounter many nations with other gods, false gods, other practices that go against God's commands uh, and teachings and statutes and ordinances. And so he warns them, you know, when you encounter these other things, you'll have to make a choice for God for, or without God, a choice of life and obedience to God or a choice of curses and death for disobedience to God. And he begs them at the end, Choose life, <laughs> please choose life, choose obedience to God. So today, in this passage, he is focusing them on kind of trying to build up their pride in who, in this one true living God that they have. And he has two main focuses here, first on the commandments, and second on the presence of God with them. First, he wants them to see the commandments of God, the statutes and ordinances, all the decrees that God has give, given them, not merely as rules to be obeyed or rules that they have to follow as if they're slaves again back in Egypt, but as wisdom from their father handed down. In fact, he tells them, as you're living out these commandments and ordinances of God, the other nations around you that you'll encounter in the promised land will look at you and they will say this about you. This great nation is truly a wise and intelligent people. Because of all the statutes and ordinances, the decrees that they live out that God has given them. And so that's just a reminder for us how to look at God's commandments and God's, God's decrees, the teachings of the church, you could say, as this wisdom from our Father handed down to us, that if, as we live it out, it brings more and more freedom and life with, into our lives. The second thing we want to really hone in on today for, the, for this homily is what he says next about the presence of God, the closeness of God. Remember, this is Old Testament teaching here, Old Testament talking Moses to the Israelites. And look what he, he says. He's trying to build up their pride. And what, one of the biggest things that separates them and their God from all the other nations they'll encompass, all the other religions they'll encounter, is this closeness of God. He says, what great nation has God so close to it as the Lord our God is to us? Whenever we call upon him, whenever we call upon him, what great nation is there that has God so close to it as the Lord our God is to us, whenever we call upon him? How much more true is this for us today as New Testament, New Covenant believers, this closeness of God to us, whenever we call upon him? Think about the closeness of God. God walked with Adam and Eve in the garden. And then after the, some sin, the relationship began to be broken. 
God kept pursuing humanity through Noah and Abraham and eventually Moses. And think about the closeness of God described with, in that relationship with Moses. He said God spoke to Moses face to face as one man speaks to another. Face to face closeness. And God used to be so close to the Israelites, he, would, he revealed his glory, his presence in this glory cloud that would lead them as their journey through the desert. And then would, when they had to stop and rest and, and settle in and t- make their tents, then the glory cloud would come down and just surround this place and really protect them from any other nations and armies that might come to, uh, and encounter them to destroy them. And the, God was so close to them in the Ark of the Covenant, right? And that was not close enough for God. He began, he had poured his spirit into Moses but he wanted closer, so he began to pour his spirit into 70 of the other elders with Moses. And so then God's spirit was more around, close to his people, and that was not close enough for God. Eventually, God wanted to be so close to us that he became one of us. And Jesus, he walked around, God in the flesh, so that everybody who saw Jesus, encountered Jesus, and talked with Jesus, truly saw God face to face and spoke with God face to face, and that was not close enough for God. Jesus died for our sins, was raised from the dead, ascended into heaven, and then Jesus and his Father, our Father, they send their Holy Spirit to be inside every believer. Talk about close. The Spirit of the living God inside each and every one of us who believe. You ever try to look look inside? (laughs) Paul describes the closeness with the image of marriage, right? In Ephesians, he talks about this. This has, he said, basically just as, look at this awesome mystery, first of all, of marriage, how the two become one flesh. And he starts talking about that mystery. And then at the end, he says, actually, I'm not even talking about that great mystery. I'm talking about the mystery of of the unity of Christ and his church, how the two spirits become one spirit, our spirit united with God's Holy Spirit and an unbreakable bond. Talk about close. So that spirit of the living God is within us, especially whenever we call upon him. Basically, we can call upon the spirit of the living God within us and, and talk to God anytime we want to. Right? And it's and as quick as we want to. How many of you really feel that closeness that you could just close your eyes, tune into God's presence, ask him a question, and he will answer you within 30 seconds? Come on, some of you are shy, because I've seen you at daily mass. We've been practicing this. I got the microphone, but I'm not going to ask you for volunteers yet. (laughs) This is just to scare people. Well, today we're going to practice, we're going to do a little exercise. We'll explain how we can recognize God's voice speaking to us so naturally, so normally, and and tune into that presence, ask him a question, and recognize his presence, recognize his, his, not his presence, recognize his voice speaking to us. Wouldn't that be cool? Oh, we're already past time, so next time. (laughs) Just kidding. You know I don't mind going long. Okay, we're going to, believe it or not, this will be a summary teaching. We'll, we'll generalize, a couple, generalize a couple of things and get to it. Um, the, here's the basic exercise to hear God's voice. See, okay, first we recognize God's voice like this. Actually, let me tell you a story. So we did this practice, this exercise with the school on Wednesday. And so I was trying to explain this to them. And I began just first saying, okay, first of all, how many of you, you, you can pray and you can hear God's voice and you know you've heard God's voice when you, when you pray? And, you know, maybe six or 12 raised their hands, you know, out of 200 something. I say, okay, this is good. Now, one poor girl, she had me in the front row. So you know what happened. <laughs> I, I come over, I say, okay, so you have prayed and you have heard God's voice. You know it was God's voice. She said, yes. I said, great, how, how did you know it was God's voice? You know, can you just teach us? How did you know it was God's voice? Well, because he answered my question. 
I said, okay, so simple. We're on a good track so far. Because he answered your question. So I said, okay, so what did God's voice sound like? I mean, like when, you, when he answered your question, did you hear a voice? Did you, was it, was it like a voice speaking? Was it like a thought? What, was it like something else? What was it like? She said, it was like a thought. I said, perfect. Right, because this, this is, a, if you're taking notes, this is what you write down. God's voice sounds like spontaneous flowing thoughts that light up our mind when our attention is on him. Too easy? God's voice sounds like spontaneous flowing thoughts that light up our mind when our attention is on him. See, every single person, every single human being, whether you're a believer or not, is made already to hear and recognize God's voice speaking. In fact, God speaks to everybody, whether they're a believer or not. In fact, that's how he gets believers, right? He says, come follow me. We were made to hear God's voice, to recognize God's voice. This is not some supernatural, charismatic gift of the Holy Spirit. God does reveal, speak in extraordinary ways, but this is the ordinary way that God speaks to every single person. He works with how we naturally are. Don't we naturally, every single one of us, have these flowing thoughts all day long through our mind, through our head, through our days, you know? All day long, flowing thoughts through our mind. Sometimes they drive us crazy because they never shut off. Sometimes the thoughts are our thoughts. Sometimes the thoughts are negative thoughts. Sometimes the thoughts are God's spontaneous thoughts. Sp some thoughts that are definitely from us are cognitive and analytical. They're kind of step by step by step by step. Other thoughts come and they're spontaneous. It could be a spontaneous negative thought. You can just assume that is from a fallen angel. If it's a negative analytical thought, then that's from us. That's our thought, speaking out of usually our wounds and insecurities. You can ignore that one too. But God's thoughts, when God's voice is speaking to us through spontaneous flowing thoughts, that they, first they light up our mind. They don't bring darkness to our mind. They bring light and clarity. And they usually speak truth. And oftentimes if we're asking him a question about ourselves, it will speak, God, God will speak something about us, about us that we don't believe about ourselves too sometimes. <laughs> to show us how he sees us. So that's how we recognize God's voice as the uh, spontaneous flowing thoughts that light up our mind when, we're, when our attention is, is on him. Or like Moses says today, whenever we call upon him. Whenever we call upon him. So the simple exercise you can do and keep to, to grow stronger and stronger in this recognition is first to be, first draw your attention to God. Call upon God, as Moses says. And then, once you have, your attention is on God, his presence, whether you, whether you feel that presence or not, just when you notice your attention is on God, then you ask him a question. After you ask that question, you just wait and watch with your attention on him for that first spontaneous thought to come. The first spontaneous thought. Don't, don't doubt the first one, or you'll doubt every other one after that. And the thought, remember a thought, can be a word, a phrase, an image, a vision. It could be a flashback of some other place, something in your past. Sometimes it's just an overwhelming feeling that comes. God can speak a, a thought like this uh, and when he answers the question in many different ways. After you receive the answer, you can just dialogue back and forth. Or when you, you have to go, you, say, you just say, thank you, Father, for speaking with me. Thank you, Jesus, for your voice. So easy steps. Draw your attention to God, his presence. Ask him a question. Wait for the first spontaneous thought that lights up your mind while your attention is on him. And there it is, God's voice. And you can dialogue with that as often, as long as you want. Today we'll ask a simple question that we know, already know the answer to. 
We've been doing this during daily mass. We've been doing this last two weeks on Friday at Bernie Ones. But it's all okay to do the same thing over and over and over, because then you just get better and better and better. You know? The question we'll ask is, Jesus, do you love me? Jesus, do you love me? You know, we ask a question we already know the answer to, because if you hear no, then, you know, it's not Jesus speaking to you, right? We already know Jesus loves us. We already know the answer is going to be, yes, I love you, because the Bible tells us so, because Jesus himself says, no greater love has someone that they lay down their life for you, and he lays down his life for us. And even though we already know he's going to say yes, how, isn't it nice, even though you know somebody loves you, isn't it nice to hear them say it? <laughs> to hear them say, I love you. I mean, when somebody says, I love you, you're not like, all right, no, don't tell me that anymore. <laughs> so we already know the answer. But remember now, God will, can speak it in different ways. It may be that first spontaneous thought, maybe yes. God may even speak that to you before you finish asking the question, right? I was practicing yesterday because uh, I practice what I preach. I was saying, okay, Jesus, and he said, yes. And I was like, I didn't finish asking the question, Jesus. <laughs> sometimes he does that. Sometimes, sometimes he waits. Sometimes he waits to see if you'll give him space. He, 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 you know, God's everything, so sometimes he's an introvert. And he waits till you give him space before he'll speak. And then he'll speak that fast. Lights up your mind like a light switch. Right? You turn on the light switch, the light comes on like that. I'll give you some, some examples uh, of, of the different ways that God can speak, I love you, through a, the first spontaneous thought. <clears throat> the school mass, we're asking. So we did the exercise together. It takes about two minutes to do the exercise, which we'll do together today. It just takes longer to explain it at first. And then once you've got it done, you just can practice, exercise, exercise, exercise. So we did this exercise with the kids, same question. Jesus, do you love me? We read Pete a couple times, slowly, just to make sure um, we're tuned in, and everyone has a chance to try to recognize that first spontaneous thought. Jesus, do you love me? After about three times, and waiting from, in silence each time, then I, I asked the children, okay, how many of you feel like you recognize the first thing that came to you, the first thought that came to you after you asked a question? You know, and maybe like 30 or 40 or so raised their hands, you know. I say, okay, pretty good so far, you know, good start. Who wants, to, who wants to volunteer? Who wants to say the answer that Jesus gave you to the question? You know, then all, they all want to volunteer. You know, like the opposite of us here, you know. They all want to volunteer. So I'm walking around with the microphone, you know. And, it, and the first, many of the answers were, the first couple of answers were, he said, yes, he said, yes. I said, all right, beautiful. And then it gets a little longer. You know, the next couple were like, he said, yes, I love you. Yes, I love you. Yes, I love you. Yes, I love you. And I'm going around. They all got the same one. And then there's one girl in the back. I'll change the name. I'll say her name is Nikki. I say, okay, Nikki, you wanna, you, what did God say to you, when you to answer the question? And she says, he said, Nikki, I love you so much. And then I felt like he hugged me. You know, I thought it was awesome. How tender is that? You know? Another girl in the sixth grade, she said, well, the first, the first thought that came was a, a glowing cross. A glowing cross. I said, that's beautiful. That's like the sign of the cross is a sign of God's love for us, you know? Uh, and I said, how do you feel? I asked him a couple of them, how did you feel when you heard that? That, that when you recognize that voice of God saying, I love you, you know, oh, I was awesome. Oh, I love it. Oh, I just feel peaceful, you know. I don't know, it just feels good. It just feels good, you know. Last night, they were, they were very shy last night, huh? Because right away, I was holding the microphone ready for some volunteers, you know. And, I, and, and so I said, how many of you recognize the first thought that came, the first spontaneous thought? You recognize, you know, they were like, 
So I started to put the microphone down, you know, and then they started to put their hands up a little bit. I said, okay, I'm not going to ask anybody to volunteer, you know, and then some more hands came up. Yeah. Then afterwards, somebody comes up, she says, you know, I, um, I've heard this a couple times because I've been going to a couple of daily masses, I, so I've been practicing a little. And, and today, I, so I, I, I closed my eyes, I asked Jesus, do you love me? And right away, I, the first thought that came was, yes. And I said, but, it's like, God, how do I know really that this is you and not me? And she said, almost immediately as she finished, the next spontaneous thought said, trust me. Trust me. Next lady comes up. I don't know if this, what this is, but there's this beautiful adoration chapel I love to go to in uh, La Jolla. And they have a beautiful tabernacle. And it has this little door on it. Open the door, and there's Jesus right there in the Eucharist. I said, that's awesome. You know, that's a great place. I've never been there. She goes, well, that, no, like, I mean, when I, the first thought that came for me was that place. I had a flash image of that place that I love to go to where I really experienced God's presence. Do you think that was, that was God's voice? I said, yes, that was God's voice. <laughs> he's showing you the Eucharist. He's showing you his body, blood, soul, and divinity, how he's offering up his life for you. I said, I said he's showing you not just the, this body, but we know the, the Eucharist is not just any body part. It's not a finger. It's the heart. Right from the Eucharistic miracles where it has actually turned flesh and they've tested it scientifically, they've all said this flesh comes from a heart muscle. So I said, Jesus is showing you this, his sacred heart. What better way to say I love you than here's my heart? Someone after the last Mass, he, he says, you know, I was, I was ask, actually asking God that same question before you even said what the question was going to be that we were going to ask. And, 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 and before I was could ask, you know, before I could ask, all of a sudden I was just overwhelmed with this feeling of love, like the love that I, ha I haven't experienced from my wife and my children. I was just overwhelmed with this feeling of love. Powerful, huh? So many times, sometimes people don't, don't recognize right away, but after the fourth or fifth time they practice, then all of a sudden they, t they recognize God's voice Oftentimes, they just start crying. <laughs> it's powerful. So I just share all these little stories to, sh to show you. God may, sp he will, as he speaks yes to you, I love you, it may come in any or all of these different ways. All you and I are doing is asking the question, then we're attentive, we're just watching, attentive to his presence for however he chooses to answer. But he will answer. And any time you're practicing on your own, if you're not quite sure an answer is coming, you know, or you feel like you just got distracted, you can just back to step one, back to praise God, worship God, adore you, God. And then ask the question once you've tuned into his presence. So I think I, maybe I skipped it. When you're, at, when you're tuning into God's presence, if you already have prayer life every day, you probably already know how to center in on God's presence. But if you need help or not sure, want other ways, you know, easy way, you can put on a worship song and just begin worshiping God with that song until you recognize you're attentive to his presence or just attention is on him. And then you can ask the question. Or you can just pray, praise God on your own, spontaneous praise out of your mouth. God, you're so awesome, you're so wonderful, you're so amazing, so beautiful, so marvelous. And you just start going, 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 and until you recognize, oh my gosh, I'm a, your, your attention is on him. You can just repeat the name Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, I love you. Jesus. And when you say someone's name, they look at you. <laughs> and when you say someone's name, you're looking at them. So that's why the name of Jesus works very well. I know, except for kids. Sometimes kids don't let you say their name, they look the other way, right? I know. <laughs> I know. I'm watching you guys out there. Or you can say, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy. Whatever is helpful for you to put your attention on God, that's what you want to do. Then you ask the question. Wait for the first spontaneous thought that lights up your mind. And then you start talking. Or when you're done, say thank you. So we'll practice that today. Right now, it just takes two minutes. Such a simple concept, but it does take a little practice. So we'll just practice by praising God. 
spontaneous praise. So I just invite you to praise out loud with me or whisper or in your heart, whatever is natural for you. Uh, doesn't, don't try to force it. Just come naturally into his presence and get your attention on him. We'll praise God for about 30 seconds out loud together. And then when uh, the attention is kind of there mostly, we'll ask the question. And I'll repeat it a couple times slowly as we're just listening. And sometimes he'll just tell you, yes. He'll just repeat, he'll just tell you three, four, or five times, I love you, love you, I love you. And then we'll, uh, then we'll thank him. So, Father, we just close our eyes. We put our attention on you right now. We ask, Father, we want to hear your voice. We want to hear your voice. We were made to hear your voice. So we just turn our attention to you, and we, be, we just praise you. Praise you, God. You are so awesome, so marvelous. You are truly matchless. Uh, you are a faithful Father. You have told us you are, you are God the healer, God the redeemer. God the Savior. You are, Jesus, you are wonderful, counselor, prince of peace, mighty God. You have, uh, there's no one like you, God, there's no one like you. God, you are the, you are the, the, Jesus, you are a son of man and son of God. You are a Savior, our Redeemer, our Messiah. Your majesty is beyond measure. You are so majestic, so, so majestic. And you are a good, faithful father, full of kindness and steadfast faithfulness and steadfast love. Father, we want to hear your voice. So we ask you, Jesus, do you love me? Jesus, do you love me? Jesus, do you love me? Okay, who recognized the first thought that came to you? Don't worry, I don't have the microphone down. You know, the first, okay, pretty good. Just keep practicing. Sometimes if you didn't recognize, sometimes it does take four or five times just because this might be a new thing. And then all of a sudden, you'll hear and say, oh my goodness. <laughs> it will change your whole way of praying and hearing God's voice. So, Father, we just close together thanking you. We, we thank you for your voice speaking into our lives. We ask you to continue to open the ears of our hearts to hear and recognize your voice. We honor you for your presence with us. Whenever we call upon you, you are here to speak to us. Thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen.